Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Uh, we're back again with another video on a new game. This game is called Tribes of Midgard. Uh, it just got released uh, last week. Uh, the game is basically a survival wave defense with re with some resource gathering, crafting, and uh, boss fights, and some other cool features we'll be talking about right now. So, uh, the main game has uh, two basic modes, Saga mode and the survival mode, for now. Uh, they're planning to add more modes in the future, but uh, right now they only have two. So we'll be talking about the saga mode, because at the start of the game, this is the only one you can be playing. Uh, at the start, uh, saga mode is like the campaign and story of the game, okay? Uh, it has uh, the same, they both have the same features, uh, but this one uh, allows you to like, uh, all your character unlocks and challenges and all of these uh, stuff and events, uh, cool events happen on the saga mode, and the other one is just endless survival non-stop, okay? So, uh, the idea of the game is for you and your uh, and your Vikings, as they're called, to survive uh, and kill the invading Jotuns, or giants to be specific, and uh, uh, night, uh, what, I can't remember what they're called, but let's just call them night creatures for now, okay? Because uh, their name is, <laughs> is too hard for me to pronounce, yeah. Uh, so you have like two types of enemies uh, that attack you on waves. You have the giants who appear from every uh, certain amount of days. Every three days you get, you get a titan that appears on the map and it starts moving towards your, uh, your village. On the third day it will kill you. Okay, it will kill the village. Depends on what titan, obviously. There is like multiple ones. There is a magma titan and there is a witch titan. The witch titan is the by far the most annoying one. And there is... Um, the ice titan frost giant uh and the uh, there is the um uh, the storm titan or like the guy that controls lightning okay these are the uh, what i'm calling them for now because i can't pronounce their names i'm not that good with uh, the language yet yeah uh so uh these four titans each one of them attack like uh, every time uh they spawn in every like a certain amount of time they spawn and they have a cycle and when they spawn in, uh, their starter HP depends on how many players you have. So if you're like a single play, if you're playing solo, uh, you can get uh, the Titan to spawn at like HP around fifty thousand for the first time. The second one uh, maybe reaches a hundred. Uh, for uh, me and my friends tried to play with three. The first Titan was in the eighty thousands, and the second one was in the 150 k HP. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's about it for these two tit like for the Titans. Uh, other than that, you have resource crafting. I will, I'll go in game and right now and show you what I'm talking about. So, uh, for now, let's talk about customization. So, you have... Uh, actually, sorry, let's talk about the progress. We'll be talking about the classes. You have four different types of classes. You have the... Uh, uh, I'll be naming them... Okay, let's call... It, like, the purple ones are the scouts. The red ones, let's call them the fighter class. The blue ones are the tanks. And the yellow ones are the supports. Okay? So... Uh, the purple class are uh, excel in like movement and uh, bow mastery, let's say, like movement, and they're like excelling in bow mastery. As you can see, this guy abilities, for example, has like bow mastery as one of his abilities. He can also have sword mastery, but his main like skill point or tree, let's call it, let's call it the tech tree, uh, evolves around uh, bows. Okay, as you can see, the warrior, let's say, let's call him as our DPS excels in holding axes and fighting and stun locking enemies and like all these uh, cool acts you know, okay so basically he's like your tanky uh, dps fighter he's your uh, tanky dps fighter and then you have the guardian for example the guardian is basically the tank of the game okay he's the like these two classes are the best tanks in the game as you can see like you need to kill three jotnar in a world to in saga mode and i'm guessing the jotnar is the ice giant and you need to uh, basically kill three ice giants in order to unlock him, okay? And when you unlock him, you'll get his cool abilities you can level up. And also the Sentinel, uh, the same thing. Uh, you need to block 25 attacks in 10 seconds and uh, for you to unlock, and yeah. And you've got your Seer and your Warden. Uh, basically, these two guys are the support characters. As I have read, the Seer is the one that specializes in healing, okay? As you can see in his tree, he has fast revive, safe revive, haste impulse, haste impulse to these, and like home colossus. These um, uh, these uh, allow you to uh, basically 
revive your friendlies and be more of a utility. Um, you're going to be doing damage, but at the same time, your main role is going to be utility and helping your team fight and survive the waves, okay? Uh, for the Warden, uh, as I read and I understood on, on the wiki, the Warden is basically adept at uh, crafting, okay? She's the best at crafting and traveling uh, and bringing, like, uh, supplies from and back to the uh, front line, okay? So these two, yeah. Yeah, so basically these two at the end are mostly utility for people who who like to do more crafting and more building than they're actually doing more fighting, okay? The rest of the classes are just mainly for like, the first one uh, can explore the whole map pretty quick. The And these two in the middle are mainly the guys that you want on your uh, on your team for, you know, fighting the big bosses and stuff, okay? So, let's go back a bit. Uh, now yeah, we've talked about the classes, well, let's talk about the recipes. So you have different types of weapons, you have swords. Okay, the first type of swords uh, can go from villager 1 to villager 2 sword, okay. So after that, the sword cannot be upgraded any more levels. So like all the ones that end up in green are the uncommon upgrades. And these are the easiest one to get. Like these four are the easiest one to get. And then you go to the uh, rare upgrades. You have three types of swords, uh, three types of weapons. You have a uh, an axe, you have a sword, and you have a hammer that you can upgrade to the third level. Uh, so if you upgrade them to uncommon, you're gonna your their ability is gonna get uh, like your sword is gonna do more damage, and the ability they use is gonna be better. Okay, like they're gonna get an upgrade on their ability. If you upgrade them to the third level, you're gonna get uh, offer you another ability. For example, as we can see at the hair seer sword, you can get a tornado plus. Okay, so as a start, it only offers tornado. At the second one, offers tornado too, but the damage is increased. At 3, it offers a spin dash and a tornado plus upgrade, okay? At the third one, you've got the, for example, the Raider Axe, uh, a throw and a swirl. At the Feral Hammer, uh, you got a leap and you got a shatter, okay? And so on and so on. For example, uh, the, the this like this sword, the Serpent Tongue, okay, uh, can't allow you to do more void damage, okay? Like this game has elemental damage, you have fire, you have cold damage, you have elemental, uh, you have void damage. Or like as we call it dark and you have uh, uh, so we said fire lightning uh, and cold and yeah and dark damage yes four elements okay uh, yeah that's basically it the best weapon you can get are the legendaries okay these are the best in the game and they do the most damage so like your main goal is to try and acquire them there's multiple ways for you to acquire legendary weapons depends like you you might find you can uh, either craft them and i think you can uh, you can get them as a drop i'm not sure about the drop thing but i've seen like uh, some bounties that give you unique weapons i'm not sure if they give you legendaries yet but uh, I, I haven't tested it okay uh so as you can see you have some uh, some recipes that are unlocked uh so these recipes basically require you to do a challenge for them. Uh, unlock as a challenge reward. Uh, for you to check out the challenges, uh, you can go to this challenges, okay? And there is class challenges. Defeat, for example, for every class you can get a challenge uh, to unlock a new class. And you have achievement challenges that give you like these unique uh, uh, like uh, cosmetics. So the yellow ones are mainly cosmetics. Uh, for example, this one gives you a rune or the claim. This one gives you a, um, a recipe. If it has this paper looking thing on it, it's a recipe you can craft. Okay, so you need to do, if for, for you to unlock all of them, you need to go through the challenges. Okay. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, put it in the uh, comment section below. I'll be keeping an eye on the comments. And if you like the video so far and you enjoy the information that I've been um, talking about, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. And also I'll put a link for my Discord so you can uh, join up and we can play together. Okay. And also you have the uh, Saga challenges, which also give you a couple of unique stuff you can do, okay? So, let's go back to the recipes. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, uh, these are the recipes. Uh, we have shields in the game. Uh, just, just a hint, if you're playing with swords and axes, okay, sword, axes, and you, you can have a shield, but if you play with a hammer or a bow, you're not going to be able to use a shield at the same time. Like, the hammers are dual-handed, okay? So you can't, uh, you won't be able to have it. But uh, you can equip two types of weapons. So you can have basically a hammer, okay, as your main. And your secondary, you can have a sword or an axe and a shield. Or you can have, for example, a bow. And you can have a sword and a shield as backup, okay? 
you have different types of shields. Also, shields have abilities in them. Uh, depends on what shield you're using. Like uh, some shields have abilities in them. Uh, and when I say abilities, I mean stats. Uh, like their stats can do a lot. Like you have different stat resistance for different stuff, depending on what you're fighting, obviously. Uh, you have your armor. Same thing. Same thing applies. Recipes, upgrades, and like legendary and stuff armor. For example, this one, as you can see, it, like the G Galvig's uh, boots, uh, has fireproof. Okay, so if you're like, because the game has different zones, you have uh, an, a zone that looks like a desert. If you go there without drinking uh, uh, for a special elixir that you can use to give you like fire resistance or heat resistance, uh, you're going to be receiving DPS damage over time. Okay, and you're going to be dying. Cool. Uh, the tools you have uh, five levels of tools. You have the basic ones, the flint, and then you have the stone the silver, the crystal, and the gold lumber axe. So I'll be explaining each one of them. So the flint level is the lowest yield uh, that you can get. So basically, let's say a tree gives you a maximum of 20. With the flint, you're going to get only one unit of resource from it, okay? With the stone one, you're going to get probably from 4 to 5, something like that. Silver, maybe up to the 10s. Uh, the crystal one gives you up to 15, for example. And the gold gives you the maximum you can get, okay? So, uh, but uh, just be, just to have these things are not allowed, you can't use them as weapons, okay? Your weapons are different from your tools, cool? And the consumables, uh, you have like these consumables, for example, as I said, you need a, uh, like, as I talked about, if you want to go into different zones, you need some special elixirs. For example, this one is a heat proof elixir, gives you like a two, it lasts for two minutes and gives you uh, resistance to heat. This is useful for when you're going into the uh, desert domain, okay? And this same thing applies for the cold proof elixir. Uh, it gives you uh, resistance for ice or cold when you go to the uh, ice zone, okay? And you have your health potions, obviously. Uh, you can use them to heal up. You got your mana elixir. I'll explain mana in a second uh, when we go in game. And uh, you have your speed elixir, which gives you movement speed, okay? Uh, you have healing brew. Uh, Basically, this is uh, like a regenerative, like regen aura that lasts around you, okay? And lasts for 40 seconds. Uh, protection, like let's say an armor buff or a shield buff. Uh, waystone, uh, I'll explain the waystone in a second as well. Uh, the repair, uh, basically helps you repair the uh, weapons and kits you have on you. Invincibility soup, this one is uh, like, you know, you cannot be taking any damage, but this one is really really rare to craft and like the resources are kind of um, uh, a bit a bit hard to get just a tiny bit especially the golden horn is kind of rare and then you have your like uh, uh, traps okay these like uh, do explosive damage as you can see each one of them this one does explosive this one does cold um, this one is uh, paralyzed like poison let's say and this one is uh, gives you like gives enemies a debuff okay uh, you have a lot of things, like each one of them is good against uh, a certain enemy. For example, the first one is good uh, or great against cold enemies, or like cold, uh, cold resistant type enemies. Second one is, for example, uh, great against uh, ice. Then you can just read about them, okay? Cool. And the last one is the trap. So the, basically the tripwire is just like a, land, a landmine. When enemies go above it, it will explode and does damage. You can put uh, weapon slots inside of it, okay? And each weapon you put inside it will increase the damage it does. Cool? Cool. So, uh, for the construction, you can you can have many constructions. You can have barriers, you can have fences, you can have walls, ramps, uh, corners, ground, whatever you want. Okay? So, let's talk about the runes. The runes are a very important part of the game. And for you to acquire them, uh, if you go to this uh, progress uh, section, then you press on this tab. Uh, it's the rune tab. Okay? Uh, you can go and look how to get them. Most of them are found in the wild, okay? And some of them are equipped uh, on you at the start. Okay, we I won't be talking about what each one of them do because this is a lot of a lot of things, okay? But uh, they're very important and I'll show you how to equip at least some of them, uh, or at least one of them at the start of the game so you can, you know, have something uh, like a small buff, okay? So if you go to customize and you go to character, uh, for me, because I played and my level is already level 6, I have 3 starter kits. They don't end, okay, they're unlimited, so you can use them as much as you want. 
Uh, for example, let's say I have got the starter, Harvester Starter Kit. At the start of the game, when I start playing, I'll already get a Flint Lumber Axe and a Flint Pickaxe and a Lucky Lutron. So the Rune, the Lucky Lutron, if we go back to the Runes, let's go down a bit. Okay, the Lucky Lutron. What it does is, it it says it gives me 15% chance to double the loot drop by enemies. Okay, so if I kill enemies, okay, and uh, let's say they double, uh, they drop, uh, um, okay, let's say, let's say they drop bones, okay, and I kill them, there's a 15% chance I'm gonna get two bones instead of one, okay? If the enemy drops two, um, there's a 15% chance I get four. And just one thing, these runes can stack, they are unlimited, okay? Like, uh, I've got to, uh, to about four runes, I've got three lucky loot runes uh, the other time, and I've got one uh, Viking Hoarder, okay? from the uh, from like from the wild by basically me going and killing enemies so uh, as you can see yeah I have three starter kits uh, the villager starter kit is basically for you if you want to go like from the start of the game you want to go fighting okay and the same thing for the archer kit uh, these are like these two these last two are mainly for like fighting and hunting okay maybe the archer is more for hunting animals and the villager is more for clearing barbarian camps okay and uh, you have your like cosmetic protection, cosmetics, uh, they don't do anything unless you wear them, uh, they're just cosmetics, nothing that affects the game. Uh, same thing for weapons, you can have uh, cosmetics, okay, cool. Uh, these are the resources are, that are in the game, for example you have plants, you have minerals, you have the creatures, okay, uh, you have the bosses, okay. You have the bosses in your game, you have the characters, um, these are the characters in you, inside your game that can give you quests, and you can find them in your uh, in your zones. And you have points of interest uh, as well. Okay. Cool. So, let's go in game, and let's solo play. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So, you have uh, different types of enemies. You have neutrals. Uh, these are like, let's say, animals that you can hunt. Okay. And you have friendlies, uh, the ones that give you like quests and the uh, AI inside your villages. Uh, you have uh, neutral, uh, you have passive enemies that uh, if you come close to them, they'll attack you. So they're a bit of aggressive, wandering barbarians. Okay. And you have a uh, like the super aggressive bosses that come in the night. Okay. So as you can see, I spawned in the game. I press the I button. I can see if, like, I don't have any weapon, no shields, no consumables, no nothing, and the rune. I have the rune unlocked, and I have my tools, as I said. My power level is currently 10. Okay, so, as you can see, the rune is activated right here. My HP is 3000, I'm level 1, and all of these. So, I'll explain. If you press C, you're going to switch to building mode. Okay, since I don't have anything right now, I cannot build anything. Uh, if I press the T button, I'm going to teleport. This is my waystone. When I said that we were going to talk about the waystone earlier, this is a waystone. It's a it has a five minute cooldown, and I can use it to teleport instantly to my base. If I press space, I can do vaults, and my main attack, for example, right now is the left click. Uh, these three bars represent the mana that your character has. The more I attack enemies, the more I can uh, I can get mana. So, for example, if I press right click, I'll do a special move. Okay, and I can do these. Cool. So, uh, let's explain. These, uh, this is your Tinker. The Tinker, if you press craft on him, can al allow you to craft the tools, okay? Each tool has its specific uh, requisite to, for you to craft. Uh, constructions, ammunition, and also allow you to refine your uh, resources. So you can craft uh, cut stone, wrought iron, uh, you can craft leather, etc, uh, etc, et okay? You can, you can upgrade them by gathering souls. I'll explain in a minute how you can gather souls. Okay. And this is your shrine. This is your fast travel shrine. Uh, you can unlock shrines all over the zone. Okay. And when you go in each single shrine, you press the F. You get a fast travel. You can see something like this star and you can use it. Okay. Cool. And uh, this one here is your uh, trapper. He's basically the guy you, you go to for your potions and your traps. Okay. And over here, you can talk about the armor. Armor. This guy gives you the shields, your your and your clothing armor and everything else. Okay. All, every one of them, uh, like needs to be upgraded with souls. So by far, we survived. Me and my friends survived uh, a maximum of eight days. Okay. And we managed to like make each one of them level three, by max. 
you can go to the uh, blacksmith for your daily weapons. As you can see, you can craft these two axes, hammers, and bows for him. Uh, extra stuff you need to know about is these buildings. These are fortified gates. If you press the G button when you're close to one, you'll see what they need for you to build. And uh, yeah, they're pretty important for you to help you defend uh, the game. Like it's if without them, there is a high chance that you're gonna lose after a certain amount of days because the enemies will keep swarming in and will ignore you and just go straight for your uh, tree. You can have archer towers. Archer towers are passive. Like they just keep attacking. They don't need any ammunition in the game and they can just kill anything. Okay. Uh, you can you have two on each side uh, of the map. You can have two archers. Cool. Uh, you can have this archer uh, and a second archer on the other side. Okay. And a second archer on the other one. Uh, and you have three gates, so you can have like, for example, if you're a three-man party, you can have one guy at each gate, and yeah, like defend. Uh, the a the AI will help you defend the game. So if like, for example, if an enemy uh, gets past you here, this AI will go and attack him. And if they get too super close to here, the, this AI will come and attack him as well. Okay, if you see on your map, this is your quest board. If you press F on it, you can have different quests. As I told you, these quests give you weapons and stuff that you need. Uh, for example, let's say I took this easy quest. I press accept, I open my map, and this is the quest. Okay, this is the marker for the quest. I need to go all the way and I need to get to it. Cool? Cool. Okay. So, uh, by far, I explained everything you need to do in your base. Uh, you can have this. Uh, this is a ra rallying horn. If you if you need help at the village, you just press it. Everybody in your village will get a, like you know will get uh, this uh, notification, and everybody will get um, like notified that you need help. Now, if you look at your map, you're gonna see the this campfire, or you can see the legend. So let's talk about it. Uh, the global events are events that have a a yellow circle around them, okay, and like an icon in the middle, and it has a timer on them. These events everybody can do. The quests that you get from the uh, quest board, okay, they're single only. Like, only one guy can do them at the same time. They're personal. Cool. You, uh, you have three types of camps. You have small, medium, and large. You have a hideout, and you have an underpass. Okay, the underpass is by far the strongest and the hardest to do. Uh, by far, me and my friends have managed to clear a large camp. Yeah, they're, they're not that hard when you upgrade your weapons a tiny bit, okay? You have ruins, you have a lumber yard, a quarry and a farm, merchants, sorcerers, a bridge, a, a lair, and a biofrost. So the biofrost is the one that you use to escape the uh, uh, the world you're currently in, okay? So let's go and scout the uh, this building right here I want to show you in a second. As you can see, uh, when I entered the new zone, it said that I am underpowered. I need at least a power of 20 for me to be able to, uh, you know, survive in this zone. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mining in this game is pretty useful. So as you can see, I just press F and I get souls, branches, spruss and stuff. Every action you do in the game includes crafting and other things. It gives you souls. Uh, sorry, not crafting. Uh, gathering and killing enemies. Okay, gives you souls, and these souls you really need to repair your your weapons uh, and um, upgrade your shops and buildings and etc. And also you can use it to put uh, souls in the Yggdrasil tree. So let's go for the farm. Basically, the farm, uh, the farm right here. All buildings require the same amount of resources for you to build, and they're basically your uh, free farming. So at the later stages of the game, uh, you won't have as much time. For you to gather as much resources because the night time stays uh, longer and longer and longer the duration keeps increasing okay it's just like um, when you play don't starve okay don't starve together for example your the the timer for the night keeps increasing and increasing to the point where it stays uh, permanent okay as you can see, uh, this is an enemy, so let's, let's try and kill him. Although I have, although I have nothing, uh, I can get uh, like I can still kill him, but I receive a lot of damage. Anyway, yes, uh, I'll show you what happens when the uh, health things spawn. But yeah, uh, every building uh, you can see on this map, these like this one and this one, and there's another one that's hidden, uh, allows you to. Like get resources every 10 minutes. They will drop a shipment into your base. You don't need to gather them. They just like you build them. They will automatically drop into your base and you can uh, 
you can use them okay cool so uh this section right here is your war chest you can put all the resources here and it will get shared to everybody okay you can put your ammunition uh shields etc even the tools you can put them and they will get shared okay okay this one here is the repair bench for me to repair anything i need souls for example as you can see uh, i need one soul to repair this and put it back to maximum same thing goes for this one and they're repaired fully okay this uh like the repair thing applies on everything in the game if you need a quick heal and like everybody on your party is low hp you come to uh, this character and you press f it will instantly use a deep a buff aura and it will hit everybody in the game okay so for now we're just gonna i'm just gonna show you the um, the attack in the night okay and what happens uh, when they attack and we'll show you how the ai that you have uh, also defends we're just gonna wait for the enemy to spawn in okay yeah as you can see the purple spawns on your map since i am unarmed look this character automatically goes and attacks him uh, yeah there yeah see okay and you can you can even collect the souls that they drop yeah, don't need to do anything at this point but yeah since i am unarmed yet yeah. their main the enemy main objective is to attack the seat of yggdrasil if they destroy it you're going to be losing the game okay so be careful this is this must survive at all cost if you lose it it's recipes and the titans can one shot it if it has a low amount of hp and by low i mean uh, around 3000 depends on the titan but no matter what you do don't get titans close to your tree or they will destroy it and you can't do anything about it okay yeah so far uh this is all the information i have about the game if you're uh, interested i'll put a link for my discord and you can join the game and uh, we can play together sometimes because I, me and my friends host and play. Uh, yeah, so, so, so far that's it. I hope everybody um, got useful information from this video. And if you need anything or any help, uh, feel free to put a message in the comment section below and I'll be responding to you. See you next time and uh, stay safe. Ciao, ciao.